Chronic inflammation is the most common cause of disease. So when is it beneficial and when is it harmful? Good question because we all think inflammation is a bad thing, but actually inflammation serves us well and if we didn't have the capacity to fight uh, the problems that we get with infections and other kinds of things that uh, cause problems for our body and we couldn't cause an inflammatory response, we'd die. We need to have the inflammatory process. So in, when things happen acutely or over a short period of time, it's the inflammation that causes the white cell response, it causes the immune system to start working, and it helps us to fight against whatever is happening to our bodies. But when inflammation is sustained over a long period of time because our body can't solve the problem that we're having, like, That's, in our, like when our, in our joints and our arteries and yeah. in our brain with what, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's? Or disease. any autoimmune disease, okay, or in fact any disease at all. It tends to have effects on the body that can be quite negative. So we need to have inflammation, but it needs to be controlled so it, it's not ongoing because it's the long-term ongoing inflammation that causes the epidemic of chronic diseases that we're now facing. So now there's a new study out that's implicating inflammation causing depression. Well, this is an interesting theory that somebody put out there. I can't help but think that the pharmaceutical industry is behind this because... They want the, you to take non-steroidal <laughs> anti-inflammatory drugs. Or just anything that will fight inflammation in the form of a drug. And So then the thought is as well, if you have depression and it's associated with inflammation, maybe by treating the inflammation the depression will go away. Well, you know, that's, that's, it depends on how well you understand what, it, what depression's all about. Well, they're claiming that the inflammation can affect your mood. Like, for example, if you well, have a cold, you might feel a little moody because you're not happy about, about well, being sick. But is okay. it the inflammation that's making you moody, or is it just because you're not happy that you're sick? Well, yeah, and then you can take the more extreme case. How about somebody who has lupus or who has <laughs> Alzheimer's disease or has some other autoimmune problem that's serious? That could be depressing, but it's not the inflammation that's causing the depression in that setting as they're alluding to. These are problems that come from having a physical disability. They also come from having emotional disabilities. A lot of people uh, have dysfunctional families. I mean, who doesn't have a dysfunctional family in some way or another, Vicki? It's such a common thing. And so we need to deal with that rather than using an Advil, okay, or some other anti-inflammatory Well, they were suggesting agent. Remicade in this particular well, study. Well, that's 50 times, a thousand times worse, actually, because Remicade is one of those drugs that's a TNF-alpha blocker, which means Tumor that Tumor necrosis factor. Yeah, so it's, it's blocking the, the uh, level of tumor necrosis factor, which causes inflammation and makes us feel terrible. But over a period of five years, 3.3% of people who take this drug will die. That means one out of 33 people will die from it. Well, that'll get rid of their depression. Well, that'll get rid of everything, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that's the extreme example, and I think it takes a lot of chutzpah, it's a lot of gall to be able to make a statement like that. And coming out of Emory University is kind of disappointing. Well, it makes you wonder who funded the study. They didn't well, say who funded the research. Well, if they did, <laughs> I mean, you put two and two together, you kind of have to guess that it wasn't somebody who was doing it because they were just being a good person. But, you know, there are some natural anti-inflammatory uh, agents mm -hmm. like curcumin uh -huh. that boost people's mood. Yeah, and they can That's be That's a healthy way to do that if you think that this study is uh, worthwhile. Well, I think that that's an interesting point that contrasts what they're trying to say, but it does the same thing. I mean, if you've got a depression and it's caused by emotional issues, you got to deal with the emotional problems. That, I mean, that's just common sense. It's the same kind of logic that we use with antidepressants or antipsychotic agents or, or sleeping pills or things that help reduce our anxiety levels. They don't solve the problem, they just solve the symptoms. It's like putting a Band-Aid over something and thinking because the Band-Aid covers it up that it's not there anymore. Okay, so what would you suggest with this new information? Well, first of all, flush it because it's not, <laughs> it's not accurate and it's, it's leading the wrong direction. It's just leading in the direction of selling more pharmaceutical drugs. We need to deal with our problems. In fact, our psychiatrists ought to be ashamed of themselves for moving in the direction that they have, which is to use psychopharmacology, meaning to use drugs to try and solve the symptoms of depression or of psychosis or anxiety or insomnia when they should be dealing with the underlying causes. I mean, just because you're balancing neurotransmitters 
doesn't mean you're solving the problem, you're solving the symptoms. It's like, again, putting that band-aid over something, and because you can't see it anymore, think that it's normal, that it's, well, it's okay. They were also talking about cytokines related to depression. Well, those are just uh, hormone-like substances that are chemicals that are made by cells in the body as transmitting agents. They transmit information from one cell to another. And when there's inflammation, cytokines transfer that kind of information. So that's what they meant by that. But the whole gist of this uh, particular paper, and the reason we're bringing it up, is because it's so ludicrous. I mean, people out there looking at the other side of things from the pharmaceutical point of view, and it makes me really suspicious that what they're trying to do is just set the stage for bringing a new drug out that might be able to give the illusion that it's actually solving the problem of depression when it's only doing what all the other drugs in this, in this whole area do, which is to, is to, is to mask the symptoms.